Uh, yeah, so you guys are veterans, so I'll start off with a little anecdote about alternative energy that affected the Second World War. Uh, in the 1930s, there was a guy named Charles Pogue, P-O-G-U-B, if you want to Google that. And he invented a carburetor that ran on gasoline, not hydrogen, but anyway, it vaporized gasoline and injected it into the engine. And it got over 100 miles, some people say it was 200 miles per gallon. And they announced it in the New York Times. And Standard Oil stock collapsed overnight. And then it got hushed up. And what happened to him was Standard Oil came and made a letter silver deal with him. Uh, and basically hired him to be a manager and paid him a lot of money for his patent. And uh, they promptly buried the technology. And that was in the late 30s. And all of that is verifiable history. And then along comes Second World War. And, uh, Rommel's out in the desert kicking our ass because he's got better tanks and he's a better general. And we have these old, uh, I forgot what was the tank that we had in the second Sherman. Sure. There was a sure. Sherman, yeah. Thank Which had a lot, lot, anyway, it only got about five or six miles per gallon as it was. Yeah. And part of the major strategy in supply, is fuel supply and resupplying those things. Well, Standard Oil came and said to the military, okay, we have this carburetor, we'll let you put it on the tanks. We want it all back after the war, and they did. They took it back after the war. But while they had them on the tanks, they were getting 40 to 50 miles per gallon. And they were zipping around the desert, and at the end of the war, Sherman, I mean, uh, Rommel said, is quoted as saying, those damn Yanks didn't have better generals or better tanks. They had a magic carburetor, and they kicked our ass because they had to nut to refuel, and we did. So. Anyway, I don't know how true that quote is, but that's what's circulating around that story. But it is true that Poe existed and his carburetor existed. But that's kind of a prerequisite to what happens to technologies like I have and other people have had. Uh, there's been a long history. There's 300, the first actual internal combustion engine ever designed was a guy in France who hooked up a, what looked like a pot-bellied stove with one cylinder in it. And they used to make hydrogen back then in a very antique way where you could and it'd store it in big goat bags after they made it. And what he would do is he'd pump, he'd squeeze the goat bag and pump some hydrogen in this one cylinder thing. He'd open a flap and light it with a candle and it would go boom and the piston would go down and the hay wagon that he had it on would roll forward about five feet. And he kept doing it and he went 300 feet. Now that's in 1700, before anyone else had internal combustion engines or anything else. Um, that you can look up on the web. Just look up hydrogen, first internal combustion engine. Um, there has been a history. Uh, in the 1950s, there was a guy, and I, his name escapes me, but uh, if you want it, I'll give you emails. I'll send you, email me, and I'll give you all these details. He was from uh, Peru, uh, and he was in an area where they had a lot of minerals, and he noticed uh, that some of the minerals had a reaction with water. So he played around and he invented a hydrogen on-demand system with it. This is in the 1950s. He brought it to America. He got some senator to help him promote it. He actually put it on a yacht, went up and down the Potomac River running this thing on water. The entire diesel engines, they were running them on water by converting it to hydrogen and injecting it. And he, the senator suddenly lost all interest in him, wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole. So, in the shadows, there's always some big oil interest or some other moneyed interest that wants to suppress alternate energy technologies. And they've been very successful, but they haven't always won. So, uh, in the 1960s, there was a guy named Pluherick, and his patents are online. All these patents are online. He had a motorhome, and he was driving it around, and he was putting snow in it, melting the water. <laughs> he had a patent, and I got all these patents and looked at them very interesting. They're not that efficient, but they do work. So it's not, it's not space science to do this. What's hard to do is to get the hydrogen to come out of the water with very little energy. Uh, usually it takes a lot. Most of the people that are competing with me in the field to produce what I'm producing at, say, one amp, they're, do, they're using 55 amps. So in my particular case, all I'm doing is, is what everyone else is doing, but just more efficiently. But, Water is H2O, that's two hydrogens and one oxygen. And if you picture in your mind a, a sun with eight planets, that's oxygen. It's the core, the nucleus, and eight particles dancing, going around in a circle. And hydrogen is the same thing, only it's got two going around it. 
And when they come together, the two hydrogens click on and lock to two of the waters, orbiting particles. And they stay locked together. And as long as they do, they're water. But when they separate, that's hydrogen and oxygen, or hydrogen and oxygen. And when you get those two gases, now you have very combustible fuel. If you take oxygen out of water and put it into an engine that uses gasoline, now let's examine what gasoline is doing in your engine. It's breathing air from the atmosphere. Well, that air is about 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. So you can make it more efficient by getting a turbocharger and ramming more air in there to get the amount of oxygen up. But you also put a lot more nitrogen and create more exhaust problems and emissions. So if you take oxygen out of water, you get pure medical grade oxygen, like you breathe when you're sick in a hospital. It's pure oxygen. And when that hits the gasoline and goes in with the hydrogen, and they all mix together in the combustion chamber, you get almost a perfect burn. Your emissions drop off by 80%. Your horsepower goes up 25 to 30%. And your uh, fuel consumption on gasoline drops, and it can drop anywhere from you can gain 25 to 30 percent on low efficiency systems, which are quite common. Or you can gain on my systems for trucks 300 percent. Or you can go completely off of gasoline or diesel and run totally on hydrogen. And that car outside is about 98 percent, or still 2 percent gasoline. But by, next, by the end of this month or next month, we'll have it 100 percent water. So uh, any questions? <coughs> Do you need a partner? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it is some background. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I noticed when I was out there, I had my hand quite close to the exhaust and, the, and how cool that that engine was actually running. Yeah, it'll run cooler. A lot of people think, and I, I actually, when I started, thought it would run hotter. Um, the fact is, hydrogen burns about 2,800 degrees, and, and a diesel engine is rated for about 2,000 degrees, and a gas engine is rated around 1,200 degrees for its internal parts. Mm -hmm. So I was worried that I would be overheating the engine and the parts. But the fact is, hydrogen burns 4,000 times faster than gasoline. So when you put it in there, if you're still using a hydrogen mixture with gasoline, you're well within the temperature range. But even when you go off of gasoline and do total hydrogen and oxygen, it burns so fast when it ignites, it doesn't have time to heat up the, the cylinders that much. So you can actually get a lower burn temperature. So it's counterintuitive. Which makes longer engine life. Yeah, it does. And also the carbon emissions disappear and your engine doesn't get full of carbon. So your engines are going to run a lot cleaner. Yeah. I think I'll wait till you finish. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to answer my question. Oh, OK. Yeah. You know, they were perfecting steam engines in the early 1900s pretty effectively. Yeah. And uh, they, were, they had automatic turn the key and you start the thing and people were running on very low fuel and so forth using this simple steam. Now you're talking of separating the water to do with the oxygen. What uh, the question comes from people's mind, how safe is all this? Uh, uh, is it well everybody asked me that, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Right now the car you're driving is about 400 times more dangerous than what I'm doing. Why? Because you're driving around on a 20 gallon tank of liquid gasoline. You ever seen that? when it gets ruptured, what happens in an accident? It's a mess. It burns people to death. And that's hard to put out because usually they have to put some kind of aircraft foam on it to stop it. Um, hydrogen, on the other hand, if you stored it in a tank, and they had car, BMW made a car that stored hydrogen and a big tank in the back of the car, and they were touting it as a hydrogen car, and GM did the same thing, and they they parade in front of Congress and they do their tap dance. Oh, we're trying to be alternative, but it's just not really practical. So we have to stay with the oil companies. That kind of BS. Because the oil companies and the car companies are owned by the same moneyed interest. And they're not going to let this company get shorted by this company. They want the money out of your pocket. So that's why you're paying what you're paying for gasoline. Gasoline can sell for 10 cents a gallon.